Hello everyone, this is Josh Hayes here. And in this video, I want to show you all a detailed review of my Zygu X6100 radio, okay? So first of all, I'm gonna show you the side of it. It has a BNC as opposed to a SO239 or like a PL, uh, PL259, you know, different connectors. I think it's the kind of connector. Uh, but this right here is a BNC connector. It has a I slash Q out. Has the DC in, which that right there, that can supply it for if the charger's off. It can supply, and that's important that the charger's off if you're using your power supply to power up this radio for 10 watts. Okay. Or that could be the same plug, but for the charger. So you have to be careful on if you're charging or if you're using your power supply, in my opinion, because... You know, there's a definite distinction between the charger or using the power supply for sure power for 10 watts on this radio. Okay. It has a nice knob right here. The volume and squelch and RFG knob, the RF gain. It has the power button and you'd have to hold that button down. And I'll turn that on. I'll turn my radio on here soon. It has the general button, the app button, key button, message, DFN, which is digital filter. You know, the uh, like all the noise filters. Okay. DFL. Uh, it has the, well, those are the filters. The DFN, I think that's the stuff like the uh, noise reduction, I'm pretty sure. But I'll show you that once I turn my radio on. And then that, there's all these buttons here that select stuff on the bottom. Then you have a lock button. And you could click it and it changes the display or you can hold it down and it locks the radio on the frequency that you want, which can be a really good thing, y'all. Then it has the VFO knob, which is nice. I like that it has like a little indentation there. You know, you just, you can rotate it like that pretty easy, like this, um, like this or something like that, you know. I like to do it like this mostly. Okay, now on this side of the radio, you have the host plug port there, the host port, then the dev, which is device, that card, which is how you can change the firmware and software of this radio, which is super cool. The microphone jack, the ACC jack, key jack, and S slash P, which is speaker or like I think headphones, you know. And the cool thing about this radio here is that you could flip out both of these and you can make the radio stand up on its own like that, which is super cool. As you can see, it's standing up on its own, which I think that's a really good feature. And then you could just close them if you want. I'm going to close these just so I can lay my radio down. Okay. And this is an SO239. Okay. I can't remember if it's PL259 or SO239 or whatever. Uh, I believe it's, uh, it's this connector. It's one of those two. Something like that. But I know I have the adapter, which is B and C. So for this radio, it uses this B and C adapter. As you can see, there's the center conductor right there. And then the ground is probably, if my camera focus, the ground is right there. Hold on, my camera's not focusing very good. The ground is like the shield around it, I guess. So anyways, I'm going to plug my antenna in. Okay. Like that, it's pretty simple, really nice and easy. Okay, that's tight, it's all tight. Okay, now I'm going to hold this power button down and I'm going to keep holding my power button down until the radio comes on to be safe for the radio. I'm gonna keep holding it down now, I'm gonna let go because the radio's on. Because it's like a computer, it really is a computer, it's a Linux system, which is super cool, y'all. See that, that's like the computer starting up. Now, this antenna is only a 20 meter dipole and that's important to know because that's the only Thank frequency for, uh, wow there's all kinds of good signals that's the only frequency that it's resonant on right now y'all now the interesting thing <laughs> is um uh, let's see here i'm turning on the preamp okay Let's see something here. 
radio settings, charger on, charger off. Now, that right there is important before I do anything. Charger off. Okay. And no uh, VSQL, no squelch. 63 gain, volume set to zero. I can turn it up. Let me see here. It's kind of a little different because I don't see the waterfall. Uh, do you all know like how I get the waterfall back up? I'm just going to try some. I'm just going to turn my radio off. Okay. I'm going to wait a little while. Just a little while. And in the meantime, this right here, I'm not sure why the waterfall's not showing up. Could it be my settings or something? But that's never happened to me before. If you know, please let me know in the comments. But uh, the speaker on the radio, it's decent. It's not like the greatest, like as loud as the G90 or nothing, but it can get decently loud. But I have an external speaker, which really helps this radio. Now my radio's been off for a little while. I'm going to turn it back on. Hopefully the waterfall comes back. If it does, it's something to do with the firmware. They probably can fix it with a firmware update, which is the cool thing about this radio. You know, it could be fixed with firmware updates, SDR anyways, software defined radio. Now I've noticed this. See how it kind of acts loose? Uh, the thing is, I don't think that matters as much because, you know, it's not that loose. It's like it fits on to the radio good like like that now it's in the radio now it keeps going even further and see it's locked into the radio the thing is it can move a little bit like that but i don't think it's going to hurt the connection because it's down in there so that connection is down in there so i don't think it'll hurt it too bad now there's a waterfall back so was that a firmware glitch it's definitely possible and radio settings Charger off. Make sure charger is off because you don't want to transmit when the charger, when that setting is on. You want to make sure for sure that charger says off. See, charger off. Now, this is 20 meters. I have my power. Here's a good, good, good suggestion. Okay. I said good three times because believe me, it's a good suggestion. Transmit power 0 0.1 watt. That is what I recommend if you're using an antenna that you don't think is very resonant, which I mean like a, or you don't know, excuse me, you shouldn't use an antenna that you don't think is very resonant, first of all. But what I'm saying, let's just say you have an in-fed antenna and you use a nine to one un and you're experienced like you're, you're experimenting with different types of lengths of wire for your speaker wire I'm talking about, you mean, I mean, where, you know, there's different lengths, there's a chart that has all the different lengths of wire for like, let's just say a nine to one onion, which is what I have. I have two nine to one onions actually. Um, and if you don't know exactly how resonant it is, because the chart is accurate. However, that's not taking into account like metal objects and perhaps even metal in the ground minerals and water and all this like stuff that can affect the SWR. And so, because of that, you really want to make sure that when you check your SWR, that that power is not all the way up at 5 watts or 10 watts. You want that as low as you can get it, in my opinion, 0 0.1 watts. Because if it's too high, the SWR and your power, I feel like that could damage the radio. That's not a good thing, you know? Now... 14.268, you can go to app, and my charger is off. Make sure always, I'm going to make sure just again, I already know, but charger off. Make sure always that the charger is off. Now click app, I mean SWR scan. Now, it's scanning. Okay, and the SWR is super, super good, like zero SWR. You see that, y'all? My antenna that's a 20 meter dipole antenna is a fantastic antenna that I do not need an antenna tuner for. In fact, if you use the antenna tuner while you have a resonant antenna, it can make the SWR even more than it should be, which is strange. But 
Yeah, you do not need an antenna tuner if you're using a resonant antenna. And in my opinion, for a QRP radio such as this, you do not need a, you know, antenna that's not very resonant. Like, I usually do use in-fed, with a 9 to 1 un and in-fed antennas, just because it's easy, because I don't have a lot of coax cable that's super long, you know. For me, it's easier just to, you know, have the coax at the top of my balcony and have the wire go all the way across into one of my trees, like a long piece of wire that I measure out. And then it's decently resonant on the bands, except certain bands like 160. And of course my one radio, my one length of wire, it's perfectly resonant on 80 meters. But on the other ones, you'd have to have the tuner, which I prefer now that I'm thinking about it, I would prefer maybe a fan dipole antenna because it would be resonant on all bands, but without having to have an antenna tuner. In my opinion, that would be the best. Now, does this radio have a good antenna tuner? Yes, it does. Does the Zygu G90 radio have a good antenna tuner? Yes, it does. That's a different radio. I'm talking about the X6100 in this video. But I do like the Zygu G90 radio. And this radio right here, back to this radio, this is a really good radio, y'all. This Zygu X6100 radio has a really nice built-in antenna tuner. And not only that, this has some really nice noise reduction. Let me show you here. See? And not only that, y'all, but this radio also... Not only does it have really good noise reduction, okay, but this radio, I'm trying to remember what I was going to say. This radio has good noise reduction, and not only that, but it's just a really nice radio. It has, uh, it has really, really good noise reduction, and even though it's 5 watts, if you're using you know, a resonant antenna, that's just a really good thing because you know that your signal is going to, the, the QRP amount of power that you have in this radio, you need probably a dipole antenna to have less loss. That's just my opinion. And I think that's a correct opinion. Let's see here. Now there, uh, there's other radios. Speaking on what he said, Icon seventy three hundred. There's all kinds of different, uh, you know, SDR type radios. That is a good one. The Icon seventy three hundred. I'm thinking about the Yaesu FTDX ten. For my next 100 watt radio. I'm trying to sell my Yaesu FT450D. I'm trying to sell that radio. And I would like to upgrade to the uh, Yaesu FTDX10. Because that seems like it's a really good radio for noise reduction as well. Super good receiver I've heard. Now there's even more expensive radios. But I don't have that much money. So you know. But for what for the price of the Yaesu FT DX10 for HF and six meters, that's a really good radio. I've thought about some like all-in-one radios. For example, there's it's hard to find some all-in-one radios with like HF six meters and two meters and seventy centimeters. It's hard to find radios that have all that in in those radios and a built-in antenna tuner and all that. But the uh, Yaesu 991A is a really good radio. The thing is, is that I've heard the Yaesu FTDX10 radio 
is a better HF radio and you know it's probably best for me I I was thinking about the 991A really hard because it has two meters and 70 centimeters you know that'd be pretty cool and not only that it has fusion the thing is if I really wanted that fusion and stuff like that I could probably buy just a separate radio for that and invest my money on DX which is probably a good investment since it's sometimes hard to bring in those weak DX stations sometimes or, you know, certain stations. It's just, there's a lot of benefits of the Yaesu FTDX10. So I'm starting to lean towards that radio more, even though I was really leaning hard towards the Yaesu 991A because it has 70 centimeters as well as 2 meters and 6 meters. The other one has 6 meters as well, but... The 991, by the other one, I mean the Yezu FTDX10 has HF and 6 meters, I'm pretty sure. And now, the Yezu FT991A, that has 2 meters and 70 centimeters. And to me, that's pretty cool. But this radio that you see right here, the Zygu X6100, this is only HF and 6 meters. So the thing is, I do need a... A really good strong I mean like a really good HF and 6 meter radio if I sell my other radio cuz the Yaesu FT 450D I like that but the digital noise reduction I feel like isn't even as good as this radio this radio's digital noise reduction is super cool and, and it works surprisingly effectively if I could find a strong station here See that, y'all? And that's only on depth of zero. That goes up to 60. And you can even do that, too. See that? It's just an amazing radio. Bro. Just a really great, excuse me. It's just a really great radio. It gets rid of that noise. Listen to this. Listen to this, y'all. I mean, it it really gets not gets rid of it completely, but it can pretty much. Listen to that, y'all. Just amazing how it can really reduce that noise reduction. That noise, I mean, it reduces that noise, I mean. And you could do that without attenuating the signal. Which the attenuator can help with some noise reduction, but it also lowers the signal too, I think. Especially, you know, I mean, you could have the preamp and attenuator on on this radio. But this radio is super cool, y'all. Not only that, you can go to, let's see, here, one second, let me show you. You can go down here where there's CW, or different different uh, digital modes. You can click app, modem. You can be in CW decode mode. BPSK, RTTY, PSK31. See, RTTY, CW, BPSK, or PSK31. I keep it usually in CW mode. And then you click message, and you can send out messages directly from this radio in CW, which is Morse code. Not only that, y'all, but RTTY, and not only that as well, y'all, but PSK31. Isn't that just amazing? Now, this firmware is a really nice firmware, in my opinion. Um, I just like how it looks. Now, they probably can improve some things on it, probably. You could also do voice call, where you record your voice and send your voice. Uh, instead of having to keep repeating your call sign, calling CQ or something like that. Uh, you could change the key to auto right, auto left. I have mine on auto right, 15 words per minute, iambic dash B, 800 hertz, and tone level 10. 
that's for me you have a lot of nice filters filter one filter two filter three default like if you could change it if you wanted to change it for example like like filtering the cool thing about this let's just say you changed it and you could hear the station better if you're like wow i don't know where i was watch you just click default and it goes back to the default for all that see isn't that cool y'all then you can click close and then general to get out of that and the cool thing as well system settings uh, you have wlan which is wi-fi not only that you have bluetooth and i'm gonna click exit for now okay kind of glitched there for a second, or it's paused, but look at that, y'all. See? And it shows you where the signal is right there, which is handy. And you could use the filters as well for CW, I'm sure. But anyways, y'all, this is my review of my Zygu X6100 radio, a detailed review. I hope you all enjoy this video. I hope you all like this video of the Zygu X6100. It tells you the battery voltage there, which is super nice, 7.9 volts. And this radio, it's just really cool. I love the waterfall display right here. I love the spectrum scope. And anyways, y'all, this is just a really nice, just a really nice radio. It keeps the battery pretty well for me, at least. And you could also you know, use it on 10 watts, which is a good thing on uh, when you have it plugged into your power supply or an external battery. So anyways, y'all have a wonderful day and 73. And by the way, this is how you choose all the different buttons. This is what these buttons do. Okay. But anyways, y'all put it back on general where, it, where it's, that's where it was. But anyways, y'all, I hope y'all have a wonderful day. I hope you all enjoyed my Zygu X6100 radio in-depth review. I would think it's pretty decently in-depth. I mean, I showed you all the different things. I could have went in more depth, but uh, there's all that stuff there. Charger off, make sure. Uh, the mic gain, the best one for me is internal mic gain 27 and 27. Because if it was more, I heard that they said I sounded muffled or not muffled, but like like I was in a plastic box or something. So 27 and 27, or if they said something like that. So I think, let me turn my volume down. That's Morse code, which is super cool. And you could put your key there, right there where it says key, right there. And you could literally transmit Morse code. In my opinion, this is a really, really nice QRP radio. And when you're up to 10 watts, it's that's a decent good amount of you know qrp power and five watts i was able to talk to russia germany france and canada and also the united states so this radio on five watts can communicate to the other side of the world that's just a fact and anyways y'all have a wonderful day and god bless you thank you 73 god bless you